Hey guys, it's Alec Torelli, and welcome to today's episode of Q&A, where I take your questions on poker, business, and lifestyle. Today's question comes from one of my readers who writes to me that he lives in Vegas, he's a professional poker player, and I took his question because I think it's a great one, and I feel like a lot of people might be struggling with something similar, and I found it interesting. So he goes on to tell me he works a lot, he plays odd hours, he is a poker player after all, and he doesn't really have his, the social circle he likes. He says he has almost no friends. He feels like he's bad with women. He wants a girlfriend, but all he's been doing is going to nightclubs, but doesn't have the results he wants. So he feels a little bit inadequate. This is bringing him down. He's feeling uh, insecure and self-conscious about all this stuff. And he really wants to have the social circle to help him and, and to be around him and inspire him to do better things, but he just can't seem to find it. And what does he do? So my friend, I'm first going to start with a challenge to you, and that is that maybe you are looking in the wrong places for the types of things you want. I lived in Vegas for a while, and I had a lot of fun there. I went out, I partied when I was there, and I found a lot of cool things in nightclubs, but a girlfriend was never one of them. And I feel like it's sort of the equivalent of going to a fast food restaurant like McDonald's, and you're searching for a friend that is a workout partner probably just not going to find what you're looking for. So I think you're searching in the wrong places for the things you want. And I feel like a lot of the social pressure around you, uh, especially in a city like Vegas, where a lot of the culture is the nightclub culture. That's a big scene there. And that's what is cool. That's what the people do. That's what you feel like you should do. I mean, after all, you're a young rock star, you're making money, you're playing poker. You feel like I should be going out and partying. And I feel like this should be fun. Like, it's supposed to be cool, right? So you're trying to make it into something that it might not be for you. And that disconnect that you are probably feeling between what you actually want and what you're getting is where some of the problem is, okay? The reason that I'm pretty confident that you are not getting what you want out of this situation and you might not actually like going to the nightclubs, you might not actually like this, the energy you're in, is because you're not getting the results you want. If you were getting the results you want and you were like, look man, I want to sleep with as many women as possible, I'd be like, well, you're probably looking in the right place for what you're trying to accomplish, but you're telling me you're looking for something totally different and you're striking out doing it. So it's probably means you're looking in the wrong place. So I would tell you that this, this disconnect you're feeling is a result of a little bit of inauthenticity that you're putting out towards the world. If you look at the world like, instead of just this random noise that happens or this random thing around you, but if you look at all the situations in your life, all the people in your life, all the opportunities in your life, all the things that happen to you, like a mirror, and those people, those situations, those opportunities, they reflect something to you. They reflect you. They reflect who you are. If you don't like the situation that's happening around you, then there's something that you're putting out to the world, to those people, that is wrong. It's inauthentic. It's not who you are. So if you're attracting the person that wants to hang out with you and party at the nightclub or the girl that wants to go out and just drink and have bottle service all the time and that's not what you're actually about, then there's a reason that person is attracted to you. There's a reason because she's not attracted to, she might not be hanging out with Bill Gates. Right? He's probably not putting out that energy to the world. Right? She's probably not hanging out with the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama's not putting out that energy and you're probably laughing. You're like, that's ridiculous. And it's ridiculous because it's so obvious that there's a huge disconnect between his energy and what her energy would be like or the guy's energy that wants to party with you. Right? So by being authentic, it's the best filter that you can have. Right? Imagine going on like you're shopping for a home. You go on a real estate website and you click, I want three bedrooms, two baths, a pool, a little bit of shade, room for a dog, near a park. That, all those specifics that you want out of the relationships, the people you're around, the, the business opportunities, the things around you, that is what you get by being authentic. That's a product of the authenticity and the world around you will reflect the authenticity you put out into the world. If you're putting out inauthenticity, you're gonna get a reflection that you don't like. And that might be what you're getting now. A little bit of the reason I feel like this happens with people is because when you go out on a date, when you make a new part, a new connection with a person, a guy, a girl, just any new relationship, the tendency is to make 
the, the subconscious goal of that first date is, is not to sleep with the person, it's not to marry the person, it's usually to make the situation go well. It's to be likable, it's to be pleasing, it's to be agreeable. We're supposed to be agreeable. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to bend and acquiesce and be what everybody wants you to be, what society wants you to be, what the girl wants you to be, right? And when you do that, you deny some part of yourself. I'm not saying to go out and be a complete ass, but it means that there's certain things about you, your internal principles, your deep values that shouldn't be compromised. And this should be something that is always put out into the world. And when you go out on this date, it's easy to just try and do things to be agreeable. And that could lead, it's, it's a pretty innocent to happen on a first date. Maybe she's like, well, I love um, this type of food. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Or I love doing this activity. You're like, oh, that would be fun when you really don't like doing that. She's like, oh, I want to go to a country festival and listen to country music. You're like, oh, that would be fun. And you're like, I hate country music. It's not really that big of a problem when it's something so superficial or like something you might encounter at a nightclub. But where it becomes a problem is when that leads to the second date and the third date and it leads further on down this, uh, up this funnel towards marriage. And eventually what happens is you can only deny a part of yourself so long because for every action, for every time you suppress something or compromise something, there's an equal and opposite reaction which is what Newton tells us, right? So eventually that's going to lead to maybe you feeling resentful of your partner or you're not liking your partner or you're being unhappy in your marriage or you're cheating on your partner or you wanting to leave or getting a divorce. And these things sort of happen as you further and further deny yourself along the way. And if you end up making a huge mistake, like getting married to someone you don't like, then uh, it's a serious problem. So being authentic is the best way to just filter out all the people that you don't want around you. And you're gonna attract the people that you like. So a lot of the problem, we're talking a lot about the problems because the, the, the problem is here isn't that you're like not good looking and you're not cool or you're not a rock star because you're a rock star. You play high stakes poker in Vegas. I mean, you're a badass. Um, the problem is that the underlying causes of the situation, why, why am I not allowing myself to put out my true self to the world to bring the people around me that I want around me, right? So a lot of it is, is a fear-based thing. And Brene Brown, who has an amazing book called The Gifts of Imperfection, she also has a great talk on TED, a few great talks on TED, two great talks. Uh, you should listen to both of them. And she talks about vulnerability. And vulnerability being a key part of strengthening relationships. Because in, o in order to be truly loved for who you are, truly appreciated for who you are, truly accepted, you have to put out your true self. You have to be exposed. You have to allow someone to know you in order to feel a deeper level of connection, right? Certainly if you're gonna get married to someone. And the problem is that this deeper part of you is, is, is vulnerable. Because if the person doesn't like the fact that you like sushi, you're like, I don't really care. It's not defining who I am as a person. But if they don't like something like deeper about you, like your, I mean, your religious beliefs or your, something like a childhood dream you've had or something that you value very deeply, your family values, then that's challenging you as a person and, and who you are. So we resist putting out this part of ourselves to the world. And the result is that we attract people that we don't really care about or that don't have the same interests as us, or that don't value the same things we do. And we don't have these strong, deep bonds because we are afraid to put ourselves out to the world. Okay, so that could be what you're doing, and it's probably what you're doing. We're going to something, a very superficial environment, like a nightclub, where it's like, oh my god, I love vodka. Oh, I love vodka. We're, we're friends, right? And this is probably leaving you feeling empty, or maybe you just aren't connecting to the right types of people, or you're not connecting to people at all, because you're in an environment where it's really hard to connect. So, going deeper into some of the reasons this happens, the, and then we'll talk about the solutions, I promise. The especially around women, right? Because it seems like women is the, the, the subject that you're coming to me about, mostly. When you are around a woman that's attractive in a nightclub, wherever, you feel like you want to talk to her, but then you get like this, before you do, it's like that, that thing that goes off in your mind, like jumping into a cold pool, you're like, oh, I really don't want to do this, right? And it's like right before you're going to jump, right before you're going to talk, you just like have this little thing that pulls you back, right? That reservation you have, that fear, is from a part of your brain called your amygdala. 
Okay, it's responsible for the fight or flight motion. It's responsible for our evolution as a species. We needed it a long time ago. It, it told us to, to gorge on food because there might not be food for a while. It was useful to survive. It was how we survived as a species, right? And your amygdala tells you it's really important. It's really, really important. This is why we, we, we try to go out on a date and we try to please the other person. Like subconsciously, we're doing this. You're not even thinking about it. You're not even thinking yourself logically that it doesn't really matter if this person likes you because there's three billion of her. But your amygdala is telling you it's really important, this connection, this connection with this person I don't even know is super, super important. Because when we were a tribal species a long time ago, it was really important if this girl next to me didn't like me, if I wasn't the alpha male that attracted her and mated with her and reproduced my DNA, because my DNA would die. Because there's not many women in my tribe, there's only like 100 people, and there's only five women, or three, three women that are my age, and if she doesn't like me, I, I don't mate, I don't reproduce, I don't exist. Then we evolved, and your neocortex is responsible for higher level thinking, cognitive thinking, and it's responsible for 80% of your brain's decision making. The problem is that the, the neocortex is your rational side, and, and the amygdala is the emotional side. So it's, it's much easier to tell yourself rationally, well, it doesn't really matter if she likes me because there's three billion other women, and I'm probably gonna find one that I connect with. Three billion, chances are pretty good you're gonna find a wife. Don't worry, buddy. Uh, but it's harder to listen to your neocortex. It's hard to listen to your rational side because you don't feel anything with your rational side, right? You feel the emotional pain if the girl doesn't like you. You actually don't even feel the pain. You don't feel like it sucks when you jump into a cold pool. You feel the fear of the pain, right? Jumping in the cold pool, you, ju you jump in, what happens? You're like, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold. It's so nice. It's like refreshing, it's a good feeling. It was the fear of the inconvenience of jumping in that prevented you from jumping, right? That's what happens when you're not wanting to talk to this girl. That's what happens when you're not wanting to be authentic. It's what happens when you're not wanting to put your, it's what happens when you're not wanting to put your true self out into the world. You're afraid of the potential of what rejection could mean. It doesn't mean anything. It's not important, but it's the fear of what it could be. And this is built into us from a long time ago. It's unneeded. It's outdated. Our biology is old. There's no, there's no uh, update button on your iPhone for your amygdala. It just hasn't, it hasn't happened. Okay. So, with this in mind, you have a little bit of a framework for, for why some of this stuff is happening and the underlying problems that could help you to put yourself out there more. So now what do you do, right? You're like, well, okay, I know about my amygdala, but how do I find a girlfriend, bro? So what I would do is, because you're obviously looking with the, not with the results you want and your life circumstance around you isn't producing the results you want, you got to try something different. So. Part of making yourself vulnerable, part of putting yourself out there, and part of trying to find people that you're going to connect with is finding ways to connect with them that is meaningful to you, my friend. Meaningful to you. So if it was me in Las Vegas, I would challenge myself to do something different than what I'm currently doing. And maybe it means not going out with the friends that you're going out with, or maybe it means going out by yourself and putting yourself out there, but doing it in a situation that is not like extremely dramatic. It doesn't mean like walk up to a table of five people at a restaurant and say, hey dude, I'm John, you wanna to talk to me? It's like, why don't you find an interest that you have, something you've always wanted to do. It's a great opportunity to, to combine a passion you've always had with an opportunity to meet people, right? Your goal shouldn't be to like meet people because you're, you're needy and desperate. You don't need to meet these people, but it's just like a way to have fun and interact. So I've always wanted to try photography. So I'm gonna look up meetup groups for photography in Vegas, or I'm gonna look up um, a course that I could take at photography at UNLV on weekends, or Thursday evenings. Maybe I wanna learn cooking. And by putting yourself in this situation where there's something that you value, there's a part of you out there, you're a little bit vulnerable because you're trying something new that you like, that you enjoy, that reflects something important to you, something you value. You're gonna be around other people that value the same things as you. And in doing that, you're gonna have an easy icebreaker into opening to talk to them. You're gonna be like easy to talk to the other person that's taking pictures with you or cooking the sauce with you. Like, hey bro, how'd you make that sauce? It looks good. And then, oh, okay, cool, I did this. And you're gonna make friends. You're gonna make immediate friends and the friends you're gonna make are much more meaningful than the friends that are like, yeah, dude, I like vodka, I like vodka, right? So that's one way to meet friends of both males and females and who knows what's gonna happen with those relationships. You might not make your best friend in the world or find your wife, but at least you're gonna find friends that are different and you're putting yourself in a different situation than what you have going on now. The second thing I would say is 
try to, I mean, especially with the women's situation, try to put yourself out there a little bit more. And I, I know that it could be hard to just like go out and start talking to random people. So one thing I would do, and also an exercise in authenticity is to put yourself out there online. It's not really that, um, you don't really feel that much rejection when someone scrolls through your dating profile. It's not like that personalized connection with them. And it's also really easy to be authentic because you have time to think about like what you, what you want to present to the world. Right? You could filter the information that's being put out to the world, but you could do it in an authentic way. So you have time to think about your responses, your profile, or whatever it is you need to put out there. And I encourage you to do that and go on a blind date. Go meet with someone. Okay? And your goal isn't to like make the date go further along, it's just to put yourself out there and meet new people. Right? And you could do this, and even if the date, you don't go on a date or something, at least do it as an exercise to, to get over that hurdle that you're feeling about fear or vulnerability. And make a phone call with the person. If you find someone that you connect with online, make a phone call. Just commit to making a phone call, right? Don't commit to like the fifth date with them. Don't play all these scenarios out in your mind that haven't happened or don't exist. Just commit to a phone call. Go out, go out there and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna put myself out on the dating profile and within a month, I'm gonna have a phone call with a woman. Just try it. Why not? What do you have to lose, right? The last thing I would say about this whole thing, the whole experience, right? Because you're going out there, you're putting yourself out in the world. You're gonna be vulnerable now. You're gonna be vulnerable, right? is don't take anything that happens to you personally. This isn't wisdom from me. Uh, Don Miguel Ruiz wrote an amazing book, a must read, a very short read called The Four Agreements. It's basically four pillars that you should live by to be a happy, fulfilled life. The first agreement is don't take anything personally because it's ultimately not about you, right? So if, here's an example. If, if me and you go out, to sushi, right? I'm like, bro, you gotta come try this sushi place. There's like a blue flame and fire roll that's amazing. You're like, I've never tried sushi. Let's go out together. We go out to sushi, me and you, we're out to sushi. And the roll comes and, and the, the chef makes it. He's my favorite chef. Or maybe I'm the chef. Maybe I make it for you. And I try it. You try, I tell you, try the sushi. You try it and you're like, I hate the sushi, man. I don't like it. If I were to then take that situation personally and I was like, oh my God, I'm a bad cook, I'm a bad cook, I'm inadequate, I suck at cooking, he doesn't like my sushi, oh my God, what do I think about this person? I value this person's opinion and he doesn't like my sushi, he's smart. He's smarter than me, he's richer than me, she's hotter than me. She doesn't like my sushi. Now you're a bad cook because of that person's opinion. That person's opinion has absolutely nothing to do with you. It's just that person's truth. It's the lens to which they see the world. They don't like sushi. It's not like their opinion's better than yours. It's not like your opinion's better than theirs but it's just the two things aren't connected. So by taking things personally, you're internalizing something that is not part of you. You're internalizing a situation that's part of someone else and that's causing you the pain. The pain is caused from internalizing something you don't need to internalize. And so if you go out there and you put yourself out there and you talk to this girl, you go on a date with this girl, or you, you find a friend at the photography class and you, they, you know, it just doesn't work out. You guys aren't, you don't click. It's not an inadequacy on your part. It's nothing wrong with you. It's just that that person wasn't meant to be there. By being adequate, by being authentic, it is that filter that is provided for you. If you select on that real estate site, a three bedroom, two bathroom house, and a house pops up that's one bedroom and it's a studio and there's no pool and a, and a, and a crappy bathroom, it's not your house. There's nothing wrong with that. It just means it's not in your filter. It's not in your little space, okay? Your space is here. This is your filter. This is your zone. All right. And the things that come in are going to be the things that you put out into the world. So put out you. That's my 80 or Q man. I just acted. Now it's on you. I got some stuff to do. If you guys have questions for poker, business, and lifestyle, free to free, feel free to shoot them to me here. You can get in touch with me on social media, or I would prefer if you went to alexrelay.com and just shot me an email. It's much easier for me to get all the information, have it in one place and just respond to the welcome email when you subscribe to the blog. I will answer your questions, put them in a video right here on this channel. If you have questions about poker and technical things or you want your hands reviewed, you want me to talk about, uh, review your hands for you, uh, also get in touch with me there. I will review those and put them on my YouTube for the hand of the week section, which I'll be releasing every week for you guys. So get in touch and I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.